A faint shimmer ran along the edge of a metallic spiral deep inside a frozen Soviet outpost near the Arctic Circle. It was Christmas Eve, 1990. Outside, the polar wind howled across the ice, while inside, a small team of scientists stood around an aluminum structure glowing softly under blue light. They called it a Kazarev mirror, a machine that, according to its creators, could bend the very flow of time. Decades earlier, astrophysicist Nikolai Alexandrovich Kosyarev had shocked his peers with a radical idea, that time itself was not an abstract measure, but a real energetic force. He argued that every process in the universe, from a star's rotation to a human thought, produced a subtle time energy. If that energy could be concentrated or reflected, perhaps consciousness could reach beyond the present moment. Kozarev's colleagues dismissed him as eccentric, yet within the secretive halls of Soviet research, unconventional ideas often found funding. By the late 1980s, a group of his followers in Novosibirsk set out to test whether his theories could be built, literally, into metal. Using polished aluminum sheets wound into tall spirals, they created chambers large enough for a single person to stand inside. Aluminum, they believed, could reflect streams of temporal energy just as a normal mirror reflects light. The subject would enter the chamber, isolated from outside interference, and attempt to focus on internal sensations. The device was never meant to be optical. It was psychological, electromagnetic, and metaphysical all at once. The first full-scale model was erected in Dixon, a lonely Arctic settlement chosen for its extreme geomagnetic latitude. Researchers believed the region's magnetic anomalies might amplify the effect. What happened there would soon blur the line between science and mysticism. On the night of the experiment, volunteers stepped inside the spiral. Many reported an immediate change in perception, a feeling of weightlessness, disconnection from time, and vivid bursts of color behind closed eyes. Some claimed to relive memories as if they were happening again. Others saw landscapes that didn't exist. Outside, witnesses noticed strange auroral lights above the lab, and one technician swore he saw a disc-shaped object streak across the sky. Encouraged by these accounts, the team expanded its trials through the early 1990s. Two mirror complexes were built thousands of kilometers apart, one designated for transmission, the other for reception. Operators inside the transmitting mirror concentrated on one of 77 ancient symbols while receivers, sealed in the distant chamber, cleared their minds and waited for impressions. Roughly 5,000 participants from 12 countries took part. One third reportedly perceived the correct symbols in real time. Another third saw them hours later. And the rest, the most confounding group, recorded impressions before the symbols were even sent. If accurate, that meant information had traveled backward through time. But the project didn't stop with symbols. In early 1991, researchers in Novosibirsk proposed what they called the psychic window. Two volunteers were placed in separate Kozarev chambers, thousands of kilometers apart. Both were monitored by independent observers and connected only by synchronized clocks. One subject was shown a series of random photographs, human faces, natural disasters, atomic tests, while the other sat in silence, eyes closed, recording any images or sensations that came to mind. For the first 10 sessions, nothing happened. Then during the 11th, the receiver described a woman standing in snow, holding a child. When the sealed envelope from the transmitter was opened, it contained a photograph of a refugee mother during the siege of Leningrad. To the team, the odds of coincidence were astronomical. Skeptics later argued the receiver could have guessed the theme. Still, the researchers claimed more than 40% correlation over dozens of trials. Some insiders believed the mirrors acted as resonant cavities for consciousness, like antennas tuned to the informational field Kozarev described. Others quietly suggested the experiments were an attempt at long-distance intelligence gathering, a Cold War era remote viewing system rivaling the CIA's Stargate program. Whatever the truth, Records of the psychic window were locked away after the USSR's collapse. Only fragments, half-scanned diagrams and faded logbooks have surfaced since, hinting that someone, somewhere, 
might have tried to look even further beyond the mirror itself. Weeks later, new anomalies emerged. Researchers began discovering patterns forming on the mirror walls. Spirals, runes, geometric lines etched in frost. Over six months, they documented more than 1,200 distinct markings. When the images were compared with archaeological databases, around 80% resembled prehistoric carvings found across Eurasia and South America. Skeptics blamed condensation and suggestion, yet multiple witnesses swore they saw the shapes appear simultaneously in different mirrors. Scientists monitoring volunteers inside the chambers recorded abrupt spikes in alpha and theta brainwave activity, as if minds separated by distance were synchronizing for brief moments. Some speculated the mirrors acted as amplifiers for consciousness itself, tuning human thought to a field outside linear time. Others warned that participants often left disoriented or emotionally unstable, as though their sense of reality had been stretched too far. When the Soviet Union dissolved in 1991, funding vanished, the research was quietly shelved, the facilities dismantled, and many of the data logs disappeared. Rumors persist that several mirrors were hidden in private institutes or military depots across Siberia. A few fragments resurfaced in the 2000s, rebuilt by independent researchers who claimed improvements in intuition, rapid healing, and even glimpses of possible futures. Mainstream physicists still classify the Kozarev mirror project as fringe pseudoscience, yet aspects of Kozarev's original equations about time asymmetry and torsion fields continue to appear in modern theoretical papers on relativity and quantum information. Even NASA once cited his work while studying energy exchange in rotating systems. Whether coincidence or quiet respect, it suggests his ideas weren't entirely dismissed. Kozarev himself died in 1983, years before his theories turned into aluminum spirals in the Arctic. He never saw the experiments his name would inspire, yet his belief in the living nature of time still attracts both scientists and mystics. To his supporters, he was a prophet ahead of his century. To critics, he was a brilliant mind lost in metaphor. But the mirrors remain an enduring mystery. Machines said to echo thoughts, distort perception, and maybe, just maybe, bend the arrow of time. Somewhere in the polar darkness, under snow and silence, a forgotten chamber of polished metal may still stand. And if Kozarev was right, it might still be humming, not with electricity, but with the pulse of time itself. Perhaps the truth about the Kozarev mirrors was never buried at all. Perhaps it's still echoing somewhere, bending light, memory, and time in ways we can't yet measure. If time itself can reflect us, what might it be showing back? This is The Unknown Files, where science and mystery intertwine. Subscribe so you're here when we open the next mirror and uncover what waits on the other side of time.